Hi everybody, I'm Andrew and I'm here today with my virtual sidekick, Leo. I'm on Sony Mokopi's product team and I'm here today to show you how to set up, pair, and calibrate your Mokopi system so you can begin capturing motion from anywhere. You ready, Leo? First, you'll need to download the Mokopi app. On iOS devices, you can find it on the App Store and on Android, you can find it on the Google Play Store. All right, now that it's downloaded, let's open it up. First, you'll need to go through some permissions. You wanna select all the check boxes, click select. And now we're gonna begin the pairing process. So you want to make sure you have your sensors flat on the table. And you'll need to make sure that your location uh, services are on and allow. All right, and it'll walk you through pairing and set it with each sensor. So first it's the head sensor. Let's press the middle of it to turn it on. You'll see it show up right here. Select it. Select next, select next. Next, we have the left wrist, and you'll keep going through this until you've paired all of the sensors. Now that the sensors are paired, we need to connect to them. Click confirm. You wanna make sure that all the sensors are on and they're, they have the blue light flashing, and you want them to be flat on the table and not moving, because it'll make sure that they, they perform better that way. So now that we have them on the table and they're flat, select connect sensors. You'll see check marks as they connect and on the sensor itself, when they're connected, instead of a blue flashing light, you'll see a green flashing light. All right, great. Once they're connected, you can also see the battery life of the sensors. So if, if any of them are low, you'll see this battery icon will be yellow. All right, now that we're connected, let's select confirm. Next, we wanna get our straps out. Now we wanna put the sensors on the straps. You'll see a video here showing you how it's done. And let's first start with our head sensor. They clip right in, and once they're in, they're secured. They, you see they really won't come out unless you press these two buttons on the side, these two, and then it'll come out. When putting the wrist strap on, one little tip is you want the strap to be above your wrist bone. If it's too close to your hand, it'll move when you move your hand, and that will affect the, the accuracy of your tracking. When putting the ankle strap on, you wanna make sure you do it underneath your pants and pull your socks tight because if they're not totally secure or if they're on your pants, your pants might move or your socks might move, which will also affect the, the tracking. And with the hip sensor, you just wanna clip it to the back of your belt or pant strap right in the center. Now it's time to calibrate. Once you get to the calibration screen, what you're gonna to wanna to do is select your height. If you notice that the units are not what you're familiar with, you can select the three dot menu in the upper right, go to settings and then change the unit to what you're familiar with. All right, now I'm familiar with the inches, so I'm gonna select my height and also on the screen, there's a video that plays that reviews the process of calibration. All right, now we've got our height in there. Let's go to the calibration screen and let's start calibration. Stand with your hands down at your side, straight up, and you don't wanna move. And then when you hear the beep, take a step forward and stand still again. And you'll hear another beep confirming whether or not it was good or bad. 
Now I'm calibrated and I'm capturing motion in Macopi. After calibration and you get to the, the motion capture aspect of the application, you have a couple modes. First, you can either save video files directly in the application or you can save motion data in the application. I'm going to first go over the video mode and some of the features that help create videos using Mocopi. First feature we have here is the avatar feature. With the avatar feature, you can use, there's a couple avatars that come with the app, or you can use custom applications. First thing you'll need to do is select the folder you want to use where it will read those custom applications. I'm going to just use the documents folder here on my phone. All right, now it comes with Reynos Chan right here, or the human avatar, right here. You can also load avatars using Vroid Hub. If you're not familiar with that, you want to create a Pixiv account, and then that'll let you to have access to Vroid Hub and also Vroid Studio. With Vroid Studio, you can create a custom avatar load it into Vroid Hub and then download it here in the application. Or you can download your avatar as a VRM file and then load it into that documents folder that I selected as where we're gonna read the avatars from. All right, so I've loaded Leo into the application. So we're gonna select Leo. And now I'm capturing motion with Leo right in the application. And I can create video files with him. One of the next feature I want to go over, which helps with creating nice video content, is the background. So I've got a green screen, blue screen, a white background. I can also select a custom color, or there's an AR mode, so I can bring Leo into the real world. With green screen, you can record video. The green screen's a nice tool that really lets you make custom content like you would with any other green screen. Next, I want to go over the AR mode with you guys. With the AR mode, it uses your phone's camera for you to then place your avatar in the scene. You'll need to give permission to use the camera while you're in the app. And then once you're there, you can place your avatar, in this case, Leo, wherever I want in, within the view of the camera. All right, within the AR mode, or really any mode, you can record your video using portrait mode, which might, might be nice for doing uh, sharing on social media, or landscape mode for YouTube or videos that you want to create. Another helpful tool is if you're capturing motion and you're looking at the application while doing it, you might find the mirror function useful. It just mirrors your avatar's motion on the screen. And another one is the mic option. So if you wanted to put some lip motion on your avatar as you're capturing your content, you wanna enable the microphone. When you do this the first time, you'll need to give permission for this. And once the microphone feature is enabled, the lips of your avatar will animate based on you talking through the microphone of your phone. Also, when you're on the screen, you can pinch and zoom in to get a closer look of your avatar and position how they want. And there's another feature that's really helpful, which is the fixed camera. So when that's selected, the camera stays in place and you can move the camera around and I can walk out of the shot, walk into it. So it gives you control of a camera in the scene. So I can really get a close up shot and show you how the lip fe feature works when microphone's on. So now, talking into the application is Leo. At any point when you're capturing motion, 
If you're worried about the battery life of your sensors, which have a battery life of 10 hours, so you do get a, a lot of time on a full charge, you wanna select these circles in the upper left and it brings you back to that connection menu so you can see what the battery li life is of each sensor. Another useful feature is the lock hip feature. If you want your avatar to sit and stay seated, that's what it lets you do. So the best way to use this is open up the menu, sit down so your avatar is in position, and select lock hip. Now you'll see that the avatar is still, their hip is still down. I'm able to still move the legs, but if I stay seated, during this whole time, the capture is a lot better. There's no movement of the hip. All right, now that we've gone through all the features that help with video mode, let's do a recording. So what I'm gonna do here is have Leo walk into the scene and then wave to everybody. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna use the fixed camera feature and then we select the red button at the bottom, it'll give you a three second countdown. So you have a couple seconds to get into position. And then you click stop. Now to review your video, select library, and it takes you to your phone's photo app and it records the video as if you're using your camera on your phone. So you can take the video edit it however you want, or share it however you want. So I really hope you have a lot of fun creating a bunch of video content, sharing it with your friends. So you can play it back right here. All right, now that we've gone through the video mode, it's time to go over motion mode. So right here at the top, just select motion, and you'll notice that where the mic feature was, you'll see it change to saying save. And within motion mode, there's a couple ways, it's a couple modes. You have the save mode, which saves motion data directly to your device as a BVH file, or there's send. And what send does is it streams the motion data to one of our integrations. So if you're using Unity, Unreal, Motion Builder, it'll send it directly to those softwares so you can work with motion data right there. So let's first go over the save function. So with save, it's similar to video, except it's just a raw motion data. It's not gonna save a video with it. You press the red button here down at the bottom and you can record your motion. So I'm gonna do some jumping jacks here. All right, click stop. And it asks you what folder you wanna save it in. I'm just gonna save it directly in the documents folder. And you can also play it back, just like the videos. All right, now that we've shown you how to save motion on your phone, let's talk about streaming. So what you wanna do is press save and you'll see it switch to send. You'll also notice that the button at the bottom went from red to green. So that's one way to tell the difference between whether or not you're in save mode or send. The first thing you'll need to do is make sure that your phone and the computer that you're streaming to are on the same network. Once you're on the same network, you wanna on your computer find the IP address and then take that IP address and open up your three dot menu, go to settings and select PC connection settings. You wanna enter that IP address there, select the port you wish to use and then use the UDP transfer format, select okay. Once you've set up that your, your software to receive the Mokopi stream, you simply just press the green button at the bottom and it will stream your data right into your software. Mm -hmm. 
As you're capturing motion with Mokopi, you might notice that the accuracy starts to degrade over time. One helpful feature for that is the reset pose feature. You'll see it's in the bottom left. It's the person with the arrow around them. You just press that button and then you want to stand up straight and just stay still. And in three seconds, it'll reset the pose to help with better tracking accuracy. The next is reset origin. So if you're using Bix camera feature or you're using an integration, you might notice that the position of your character is off. You can use the reset origin feature, which brings your avatar right back to the origin of that character in the software or within the app to the center of the screen. And if you notice really bad tracking accuracy and the limbs are in all different positions, we have the recalibration feature. And it takes you back to the calibration process that we did earlier in the video. One thing to note with the recalibrate feature is that it will stop the stream if you're using one of our integrations. And that completes this quick guide so that you can start using Mokopi and creating content. Leo, wasn't that easy? For more info, you can visit this URL and I hope you have fun using Mokopi and capturing motion from anywhere.